Welcome to part two of the presidents. I mean, this is crazy. Matt, Matt's unavailable. He had to attend to his family. So that sounds a, really bad. Yeah, it's not. I checked in on him. He's family? okay. Everything's okay. <clears throat> there was. I don't mean yeah. it seem, sounds bad. Like medically, it sounds like you know, fight. No, there was no fight. Just so we're clear. <sighs> Let's start, dude. Let's start where we left off. We're going right into it because we got to plow through these guys because they kind of suck. Yeah, uh, some of these guys I'm not interested in at all. So just name them. So this is Rutherford B. Hayes. He uh, he destroyed. Uh, uh, he stopped um, Reconstruction. I mean, he stopped yeah. the slave. He the, was the one helped who, the black people stuff. So the reason he did that is because he was losing to a guy named Tilden in the in the election. Yeah, South Carolina, Louisiana, and Florida were the three southern states that still hadn't counted in the Electoral College. Yeah. The Republicans made a deal with the Democrats that said, we'll remove federal troops from those states if you give them to Hayes. And they did. This is after the Civil War is over. Yeah. Still having this fucking. Well, that's because the KKK was. They were they were the real deal. They were fucking shit up. So they had the federal troops down there, which actually kind of helped the Republicans get votes because the black people were allowed to vote at this point. They had the troops down there protecting them to get their votes. And obviously, that's that's, that's what the guy said when, they, when, the, when the guy pitched the first guy pitched the name Ku Klux Klan. The leader was K. 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 He liked that's it. A bad joke. <laughs> no, yeah, right. but it took him. He had to warm up to it. Okay. K. Okay. K. 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 Um, Republicans removed it. Basically, he ended Reconstruction. Hayes didn't do much, but this is where this is actually important because this is kind of the end of it. Lowered presidential power quite a bit. These guys mm-hmm. kind of took a back step to Carnegie, Rockefeller. This is the rise of these capitalists. Yeah, monsters. like now with the yeah. tech guys. And we're the, still in. With the Bezos and yep. the uh, and uh, Ma- Elon Musk. Elon Musk. I'm sick of him. Oh, my God. What are you going to do if he bought if it? Well, he bought it, right? He bought Twitter. You guys. What are you going to do? He bought Twitter from those really great people that owned it. <laughs> Like now it's not going to be democracy because the people I like the yeah, people yeah, yeah. before were like the like a bunch of monks or something. They were. Yeah, they're a bunch of monks like they just knew everything. Yeah. And now and they, he took it and he's a piece of shit. Although I don't think Elon Musk. I don't think Trump's getting back on, which is the only thing I wanted. You don't know yet. You don't know. Who knows? Yeah. He Who could knows? be being coy. Which one? Trump? Or Trump. Or? He could be like, maybe I'll come back. Maybe I'll come back. Maybe I won't. Uh, so um, this is this is big for Hayes. 1877. When yeah, Hayes so those him. guys, the, the corporations started having more power than the federal yeah. government. As soon as because Hayes took the over. fucking uh, industrial north that plowed the south under and then it just became belching machines. Yeah. And uh, oil started. Yeah. And fuck it. It just there was no it was just steel, coal, oil. Yeah. Uh, what year are we at? This is 1877. Okay, so no cars or anything, but like yeah, you close. know, really big horses. <laughs> the horses got bigger. <laughs> Huge horses. <laughs> they were uh, like ten feet wide horses then. When Hayes took over the Penn, trains, Penn Railroad cut employee pay by twenty percent. So right away, fuckers, they were Amazon. They right were away, Amazon. They Amazon sons out. of bitches. So there was strikes, yeah. and then Hayes sent right. in federal troops to put down strikes. So the government sided with the corporations. Obviously, mm-hmm. and they used you know they went down and shot guys that were striking with Best. real troops. Did you ever see? Uh, <laughs> never mind. Do it. I'm right. Re- I'm just reacting to shit I don't know about. And That's by the fine. way, this is what when people get excited and like make pop yeah. off remarks like I've been the last two minutes. It's because they actually don't know what they're talking about. Well, we don't. Know I'm, what we're I'm only about. hearing about it from you. Yeah, but what a and good you're looking way at your phone. What a good so. way to put down a strike. Well, this is research I did, but that's all right. Yeah, just. Uh, you sent in dudes uh, to beat the shit out of the guys, yeah. the strikers. <laughs> Just open fire on them. On which uh, industries? The mostly coal? Ra- mostly railroad and coal. Yeah. Did you ever see Matawan? Mm-mm. It's a great movie by John Sayles. Nobody knows who he is anymore. Mm-mm. Eight Men Out. 
about the White Sox, the Black Sox? No. You know? Yeah, I know about it. Shoeless Joe? Mm. Yeah. So he made a movie called Meyer Lansky. Lansky. What? Meyer Lansky. The yes, Jews behind right. it? I mean, he might have been Jewish. <laughs> Meyer Lansky. Meyer I mean, Lansky. I'm not, he's not, I'm not going to say. <laughs> he didn't do it because he was Jewish. You think that's what Hitler was, was mad Jewish about? He was Jewish because he did it. Was what? the World Series? That's what Hitler was mad about? I think that might have been what he was pissed about. About the, the Black Sox? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> eighteen eighty. Matawan. So Matawan <laughs> is a movie about the coal mining strikes and these guys that are trying to make a union, right? And so there's a kid in it who's a preacher. It's a common thing back then in rural places that a child would be a preacher, like yeah. a touched child who just can really fucking rock. Sam Kinison was a preacher when he was a kid. No. Yes. Did you know that? No. Sam Kinison was a preacher before Jesus he was a comic. Christ. Yes. And he did it. It was in the Lord. It sounded great. exactly like his act. Talking about Jesus Christ. If you don't find Jesus Christ in your heart, you know, you're one of those guys. He does it in one of his specials. He flashes into it for a moment. Wow. And they cut to his mother in the audience like this. And, you know, <laughs> she, she loves she him as a comic. That. She loved him as a preacher. <laughs> but it's the same energy. Okay. So, kid preachers. Um, like there will common. be blood, huh? Fucking yeah, yeah. He, Paul Dano plays. He's not. I mean, younger than that. The kid's a teenager. Yeah, and he was the, the the spiritual leader of the town, this little Pennsylvania where you're from. Yeah, town of coal miners. And there is some. So some guys start to organize to make a union. And the kid, the the, the churches, which was common also, the church was in on the union, so they wanted to help the union. So the uh, um, they are planning a walkout or a strike or something. So the company sent these two thugs, fucking, you know, guys with whiskey in their pocket uh, to go down there and go to the meeting to just eavesdrop on the plan. So they're yeah. sitting in the back of the of the church just waiting to hear what the plans are. And the kid doesn't want them to know what the plan is. So he tells a bi biblical parable. He tells a story from the Bible that clearly to anyone who knows the Bible says what time and when yeah. and how they're going to do it. I don't know the Bible story, but yeah, the guys, it's chapters. a great moment yeah. because the guys in the back don't hear it because they're heathens. So they haven't have any faith. So the truth is right in front of them and they can't even hear it. It's a great, great that's moment. Nice. That's my only thing on Rutherford B. Hayes. <laughs> that's good though. So that's what, yeah, back then it was like this wicked, uh, but it's important for, it, it's the through line of America. Because once we were all kind of thrown into the same place, then it was this thing about the industrial rich, the, yeah. the enormity all over the world, too. In England also, with uh, Oliver Twist and whatever, and where Dick, when Dickens was writing, poor houses, work houses. That's how they did it over there. And here we had a horrible version of the same thing. Three-year-old kids working yeah. in mills. And uh, that against the, the impossibility of a capitalist structure uh and and people trying to organize and that that union organization was not a sort of liberal ideal it was the people it was the working people yeah 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 they had to do it they had to they just needed leverage that's yeah. all they just needed capitalist leverage they needed their part in the capitalist scheme that you yeah. had to, that you couldn't just get some other guys if these guys wouldn't do it for yeah, this price is this is 10, 12 years after the Civil War. That's right. Half really of these guys quickly. were veterans. Like they had been through hell. Yes. And now they're coming home and they're like, actually, we're going to stop paying you guys as much because yes. we're getting richer. Every uh, class of veterans has come home to total confusion and having no <laughs> worth in the society that yeah. they protected. They get Every a class of veterans they has gotten fucked. They get a party. Yeah. Like all the guys, the blacklisted guys in Hollywood, these were all war veterans. These were all war heroes who came home and saw the country in tatters and saw it, had some ideas about another system and they got thrown in prison for it. But yeah. anyway, whatever. But so, yes, they, um, so that then, hey, and also we were pushing West. Yeah. So, so cities also, like city, the cities like the Northeast and places like Chicago were like churning out black smoke and industry. And in the West, people were still gunfighting. Yeah. <laughs> Folks Absolutely, were fighting each other with guns in the 1870s. It would have still been. It would have been the Indian towards the end of the Indian Wars. Yeah, I mean the the Comanche were still going wild. Like it was, and there was still all these American uh, professional soldiers. Yeah, who fought in the Civil War, and some of them went west 
to fight the Indian Wars. Yeah. And then some of them said, fuck all this and just became gunfighters and used this ability they had, which is exactly the same. It's why in Japan, I don't know if you watch Kurosawa movies, like samurai movies, you need to you need to <laughs> need to watch some things. <laughs> <sighs> Clint Eastwood? Yeah. Okay. Fistful of Dollars? Yes. Fistful of Dollars is a remake. Oh, okay. Yes. Of a Japanese movie, a black and white Japanese movie called Yojimbo. This is not Yo like Jimbo? a hidden idea. This is a true yeah. Yojimbo. Uh, Magnificent Seven? Mm-hmm. You saw it? Yes. I used to watch all those fucking things. Okay. So the Magnificent Seven is a remake yeah. of the seven. Don't nod like you know it. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm the trying to get through samurai. the fucking story, if I'm being honest. What? Nothing. Go ahead. This is all has to do with the presidents. <laughs> all right. We got to plow through these. We're I know. Still, we're still at we'll haze. And we're talking after, about we'll Japanese skip. movies. The Seven Samurai is... A, is uh, uh, this Magnificent Seven is a remake of The Seven Samurai. It's a total remake. Go watch these movies. It's amazing. Right. Because the Japanese... Uh, uh, mid, I think it was called the Medieval Era. It was the same as our West because they had these wars with samurai and then all those dynasties like broke up and it became just chaos and corrupted they all became corrupt yeah and so the samurai just wandered the the, the yeah, hills gone for called it. ronin and they just oh, became swords for hire yeah and so that was just exactly the same as gunmen so these great japanese movies about these swordsmen who were just out for hire and in these towns where there was no law were precise perfect I'm just saying that these kind of things happen all over the world. Of course. Um, okay, so Hayes. Who came after Hayes? Fuck Hayes. Who came after Hayes? Garfield. Don't 1880. Care. No, this is a good one. Okay. This is a cool fact about him. He could write Latin with one hand and Greek with the other simultaneously. And they were like, this guy is going to be, he's smart enough. He could be the guy to get us out. Because this is after. So he was another nerd. He was a, he was he was a nerd. nerd. He was a nerd. But this is after three straight duds. This is after Johnson, way, do that. Johnson, Grant, <laughs> just fucking, uh, 200 days in his office, into office, he was on his way to a college reunion. He was at a DC rail college state. reunion. He was going to a college reunion. Wow. There's like jello shots and he was going to do yeah. beer bong. He was going to go wild. He was shot twice in the back by a guy named Charles Guiteau. Mm -hmm. And Guiteau is a very interesting. I looked into him last night. He was a moron. He was a traveling moron who thought that he had campaigned. It's like a village idiot, but a traveling He just, like, he would go fail in town to town and everyone hated him. Fail doing what? He, religious shit, he joined like a cult. They were like, this guy fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. Then he, he would be like, I'm gonna start a paper for that cult in a different town. It would fail. Then he would go to like Boston and yell at people. It didn't work. He would just go around fucking up. And then he was in DC and he started trying to give speeches on behalf of Garfield. So then when Garfield won, he was like, I did that. I want to be the fucking ambassador to Paris. And they were like, no. And he was like, how about Vienna? <laughs> they were like, who are you? <laughs> so then he got angry and then uh, he bought a gun. But he was kind of aware of the what significance kind of, gun of it. What did he use? He bought a, it was a bulldog revolver. Hmm. And it had, he couldn't afford the ivy, ivory handle. Yeah. So the guy selling the gun was like, all right, you can just, I'll give you the one with the ivory handle. And he's like, this is going to be in a museum. <laughs> is like, it? Uh, somebody lost it. There's a picture of it. Yeah. He, but he shot him twice. Um, and then he How yelled, did he get close to him? I think back then you could just walk. Walk up There was no secret the service. You could just walk up behind him. And he yelled like, I'm here for Arthur, who was the vice president. Chester Arthur. Yeah. He was like, Chester Arthur is the real president. Because he's going <laughs> he to <killed> he's gonna <laughs> yeah. make me ambassador. He killed him. Garfield died two months later. From these wounds, so he's uh, the he's then the fourth guy. So he was the well, he was the second guy to get killed in office. Yes, this is after Lincoln. Yep, second then guy Garfield. to get killed in office. Okay, um, Chester Arthur takes over, doesn't do shit. Eighteen eighty four is uh, now comes Grover Cleveland. This is the first major media election. Papers are now starting to be partisan. Mm -hmm. uh, Cleveland. Don't care. Don't Cleveland gets accused of having a kid out of wedlock. James Blaine was a crook, whatever. Cleveland mm. barely wins. He hated the press. Mm. One thing that's cool is he married a 21-year-old. Ow! Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> then he won the popular vote and lost the electoral to Benjamin Harrison. 
his hot 21 year old wife said don't fucking move anything in the white house we're gonna be back in four years yeah pretty hot benjamin harrison she's still around probably grandson of william henry harrison uh he didn't do anything he actually did nothing he would leave the office at noon every day and just go hunt just go upstairs yeah just hang out okay so him and <laughs> yeah so this is still just a run of horrific presidents stinks all that these are guys just stink destroying and we're the marching country. through the 18 there yes. are late 1800s 1893 cleveland gets reelected. yeah people liked his hot daughter and now their new daughter or his hot bride. wife yeah and now their new daughter baby ruth <laughs> okay you know the candy bar yeah but isn't that baby Maybe, ruth? Uh, no that's i think it's named ruth? after their daughter you don't think it's named after Babe Ruth? You gotta look that up, dude. I'm on it. Feels closer to true that did they even have candy bars back then? Look, man. You know who <laughs> don't mounds, punch holes in you this. know who Mounds was named after? <laughs> Ew. Your mother's cunt. I had a feeling. <laughs> I had a strong feeling. Yeah. What? This is uh, the candy bar was named after Ruth Cleveland. <laughs> I uh, like that. Took place in 1921. Okay, so check mounds. <clears throat> okay, just check mounds. There. See if mounds was named after my mother's cunt. Okay, well, I mean, it's just sad, Shane. What if it says <laughs> Mrs. Shane? What if it says Mrs. CK? <laughs> <laughs> what if there's a twist? Maybe I'm projecting. <laughs> it could be. Uh, that gets it. All right, but this is this, these guys are destroying the country. Uh, unemployment's at 18 percent. Right. Yeah. Great. There's a depression. McKinley comes into office, 1897. He did his campaign entirely from his front porch in Ohio. Yes. Which is pretty funny. And he's the first Ohio guy, isn't he? Grant. I think he's the- Grant. Grant, Grant is from Ohio. That's right. But there was like a run of Ohio. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. straight through, but there was a lot of Ohio dudes. All these guys. Okay, Cleveland, so uh, yeah. McKinley's from Ohio. Um. He was the last president who served in the Civil War. He didn't want war. Everybody seemed to – he his whole thing was cultivating good press. He was the first guy that seemed to master that. Yeah. He understood it because Cleveland before him uh, fucking hated it. So let's get to Teddy, okay, because he's the only guy that I, I – Well, know, this is good, Is something though. important to say about McKinley? Uh, yeah. I mean, he started – he started in 1898. The Spanish Empire was falling. Cuba was open. There's Cuban rebels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't want to, but eventually got talked into it. Because guys like William Randolph Hearst, uh-huh. the, all the major media people were like, we, we got to go to war. Fuck that. Uh, so he sent the USS Maine into Cuba's port. Somehow it exploded. No one knows how. Mm. Uh, 250 guys died. Media demanded war with Spain. That's, that's where the remember the Maine, all that shit comes from. Uh, McKinley created the Situation Room in the White House. That was pretty tight. Mm-hmm. So that they could. Mm-hmm. Huh? That's exciting mm-hmm. stuff. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 10 week war. Yeah. The US fucks them up. Um in in his thing he be annexed Puerto Rico in the Philippines, also annexed Hawaii in 1898. 1900 he wins the election this time with his vice president Teddy Roosevelt. Yes. And we can get into Teddy, dude. So Teddy, fascinating thing about Teddy. First of all, Teddy was born deformed. Yeah. His uh lungs and his uh organs were too small for his chest cavity. And his doctor told his father, um, he's got to stay in bed and he'll probably die in his teens. Yeah. So he told Teddy, well, they, you weren't born with much of a body, so you'll have to make your body. And Teddy just became insane and yeah. walked up the Matterhorn, just walked up it. Dude. He was a ball of insane energy. He would just do anything. Yeah, he was kind of terrifying. He was. And uh, he was um, kind of an animal. Yeah. But also very intuitive, very brilliant guy. Like he was the first guy that they did like caricatures of. Like he saw because he had his crazy big teeth and his glasses. So he was the first guy that they drew like this funny version of him and he liked it. (laughs) He thought that's cool because they're thinking about me. The fact that they're caricaturizing me means that I'm an icon. I'm I'm, I'm something above, you know, and he liked it. So he let that proliferate. But the other thing about him is that he liked being he didn't like being in charge of things. He liked being number two. So like they asked him to run New York City Police Department and he became a commission. He's like, I'll just be one of the commissioners. Yeah. He was like number two. But he ran everything from that number two position because he knew number one is like the shittiest job in any place. So he started 
And I don't know this. I'm uneducated and I read this a long time ago, but I think he invented the police academy mm. because New York or, or at least he in, in put one in in New York yeah. City. In New York City, to be a cop, you had to be in a family of cops or you had to pay somebody because it was the easiest job in the world. You just did. You just walked around in the uniform yeah. and cops used to sleep like in alleys <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and they didn't do it. They <laughs> never, never stopped crime. Yeah. And they just get paid to protect one gang or the other in New York City. And so and they were all fat and often quite old. So Teddy said, yeah, there's age restriction. You can't be old. He said, you have to be in shape. You have to go to an academy and you have to train to be a cop. You have to be taught. You have to have an education. You get taught lot, lots of things in an academy. It's a school. And um, so he started that. Police department hated him. He pushed it through. He reformed the New York Police Department to the point, and this is where he was better than other politicians. He wanted to test them and show that they were honest. And the only way to do that is to have them um, enforce a law that everybody hates. So I think the law was that you couldn't drink on Sundays. Sunday. So he had the cops go around New York City and bust anybody who was drinking on a Sunday. And 100% of New Yorkers hated him for this. Yeah. And they ran him out of town on a rail. And he was fired. But to him, it was like mission accomplished. Yeah. Teddy would do everything until he was despised. Like yeah. he would go past the point because his goal was the goal. The goal is the cops are better. Not everybody loves Teddy. Yeah. So then he, every time he got fired, he would just go to Montana and live yeah, in a yeah, fucking yeah. hut and kill buffalo. <laughs> and then they went and people would send emissaries and say, please run in this, this, please run in this company. Please run this company. He would always say no. And then they came to him and asked him to run the U.S. Navy. He did a similar thing to the United States Navy, which I know less about. Yeah. Um, he and, was obsessed with. The war in 1812, I think he wrote a book on it. Yeah. What was how we could have won that quickly. We almost lost it because mm -hmm. we didn't have a Navy ready. Mm -hmm. And his whole thing was we need to have a huge Navy. That's right. Like the war, it's actually pretty sick. He gave a speech to, I think, either West Point or the Naval Academy where he was like, it was probably the Naval Academy. Um, he was like, there's a vacuum right now. England's failing. There needs to be one leader. Someone needs to be the somebody in the world. Naval power. Yeah, he did two things that have lasted till now. I mean, a lot of things, but two are the national park system. Yeah, uh, it just it, no one even thought of that. That didn't exist. The idea of like the government should protect vast tracts of land. Yeah. and not allow anybody to fuck with them. No one in the, on the earth did that. Teddy Roosevelt invented that idea. So that exists because of him. They still don't have it. In the Amazon, they don't do it. That's why it's a, a nightmare because there's no laws down there that say you can't do this. Everyone just wishes they wouldn't. So Teddy did that and he made, gave us, uh, made us a naval power. Um, but, uh, and then he was vice president, which he didn't want. To, he had to, he yeah. was like drafted into running for vice president. Let's talk about this was uh, him and the Spanish, the Spanish War. Yes. The, the, at, What's it called? Hill. Uh, San, uh, uh, um, fucking San San Juan Hill. Yeah. And he went over. Yeah, he went over he's the hill. He's a dickhead. He, yeah, he was nuts. He got everybody killed. Yes, he did. He was crazy. He so what was cool was his the Rough Riders were cool. It was yes. all old West guys. Yes. Like gunslingers, Buffalo hunters, Native Americans mixed with New York Irish cops. Uh -huh. Like just the nastiest fucking dudes. Well, and back then, then you could make like yeah. a platoon yeah. like you could tell the army like i'm gonna make a I, yeah you just bought a platoon. i bought some guys i brought yeah. some guys he and was, we call ourselves 40. the rough riders and the army's like okay you're part of the army he I was guess. 40 yes and he had a family he had a sick wife and mm -hmm. a family and they were like what are you doing why the fuck would you be going to war yes and he's like because i want he wanted to go to war he was also <laughs> yeah. a rich patriarch yeah. uh on in oyster bay he had this beautiful house a big family he was responsible to a lot of people. Yeah. He took out when his dad died, he became like the man of a very it's sprawling his brother, family. His brother's great. Teddy's brother is the yes. one I kind of was like. So in the beginning, what was his brother's about, name? Uh, I don't remember. Was I, it Kermit? Was it another Kermit? Kermit might be a Kermit son. Kermit was his son. Yeah. He went to the Amazon later with his son, <laughs> yeah. Kermit. He, they went on, on little rowboats <laughs> in to the up the Amazon River and almost died. He got malaria. And he weighed, Teddy weighed like 80 pounds. This is after he was yeah. president twice. This is in retirement. 
Like he named certain tracts of the Amazon yeah. River. He was and crazy. It was he was he, he was, was fucking nuts. So wait, so then when he was, but yeah. his brother was a drunk who Elliot, Elliot was out of control. Uh-huh. He was the one who was supposed to be the good son, right? But he got like he he just did what anybody would do if they were a Roosevelt. Number Which one, it always fucks up partied. again. That's why Teddy was the number two son. He yeah. was the. It's it's like Joe Joe Kennedy, J, uh, uh, John F. Kennedy was supposed to be Joe Kennedy, his brother. Um, Donald and, Trump didn't he have an older brother? He had brother John who drank himself. Yes, that's what this old brothers do. Roosevelt, Jimmy Carter's brother Billy didn't drank Clinton, himself to death. Didn't Clinton have one? Roger Cl- uh, Roger Clinton was younger than him. Oh, okay. But yeah, a lot of these guys have older brothers who who just couldn't make it. But it's funny how he his brother ended up in like a mental hospital in like Paris. According to this documentary, he was drinking like six bottles of brandy a day. He was just not bad. And then the way life. he died, the way he died was like he had like a he had delirium from the alcohol, and he was trying to jump out of a window, but he kept just running up and down the steps. And he had a and heart he, attack. He, he had like an aneurysm Jesus. and a seizure. <laughs> okay, so when Teddy was <laughs> just, here's a great story about Teddy. Shit. The way where teddy bears come from. Okay. Teddy Roosevelt was on in Pennsylvania. Again, your fucking state. Might have been incredible Virginia. state. Not much difference. So um, Teddy was there and uh, on tour as president. And there were some people, you know, every time the president comes to a town, they always like they get so excited and they plan stuff. So they knew he loves hunting bear. Yeah. So when when Teddy hunts bear, he's way up in a mountain alone with a gun and it's him and the bear and he might die. Yeah. But these people think he's like a gentleman hunter. So they take him. We're going to take you to hunt some bear and they give him a gun. They take him into the woods and there's a bear chained to a tree a little bear who's kind of emaciated and it was chained to a tree and they go shoot him (laughs) and teddy breaks down into tears yeah and he says for the love of god let that poor animal go and there was some journalist there who drew a picture that was like a little sketch that was in the paper of teddy with this and this little bear and it was they put the people put that together teddy and bear uh, and started making these stuffed bears that looked like Teddy because of this. Jesus moment. Christ. So that his first day as president. Yeah. Oh, well, let's uh, McKinley gets shot. Yeah. He got shot by an anarchist named Leon Cholgosh. Sure. Whatever. But it was interesting. I think him or. So now we've lost three presidents. Yeah, three guys got shot in mm-hmm. the 1800s. Since eighteen, so in the last forty years, yes. Um, and the the people are like, this was a gunshot today. He would have survived in two days. Yeah. So like Roosevelt found out about it. He was out doing some fucking hiking bullshit. Right. Somebody came running up the hill. Like he shot. You're the president. They get there. The guy's fine. He died from infection. Yeah. A lot of these are bad. This is bad medicine. Yeah. yeah you, you, back then, you could cut the president on the finger to death. Yeah. Because of how bad medicine was and how infected wounds got. Yep. So, okay, so McKinley's dead. They're in Buffalo, New York. He gets sworn in. Yep. Teddy's the president. Teddy's the president of the United States. His first day at the White House, he's like walking into the White House and he gets, he runs into um, Booker T. Washington, a uh, black fella. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Why so, is it Hulk Hogan? Booker T. He's a black wrestler oh okay <laughs> he is so it's an iconic moment booker t washington um <laughs> says uh hey i want to ta- i have some issues i want to talk about and teddy says come to dinner just come to the house tonight come to dinner first night in the white house he hosts a black man never happened in the history of the country a black man being um a guest for dinner at the white house the p- whole country goes nuts. It's the first event <laughs> of Teddy's presidency is that the Senate, and I could be having some of these things wrong, but the Senate unanimously censured the president <laughs> for having, there was nobody in yeah. the mix. It like, if it was happened today and even like fucking AOC was like, oh no, you don't have him in the <laughs> White House. Everyone like all yeah. the way across the board said, that's not okay. And they censured him. They tried to throw him out. They're like, maybe we should impeach him. But the best thing they could do is censure him for having had a black man as a guest in the White House. So this was what Teddy did. This is the kind of guy he was. He went on. He had him to dinner constantly. And he went on a speaking tour with him. He made him like he elevated him more and more because he was just like, you know, fuck you guys. Yeah. 
Oh, there's one more I wanted to say about the Spanish Civil War that's pretty funny. Yeah. When they took that hill, he was on his horse. Everybody else was like, so they took one hill and then he saw San Juan Hill or whatever it's called. And he was like, we're going to take that. He went yeah. off by himself. Right. Five guys followed him. Three of them got shot. Yeah, because he went all so of a he, sudden. Yeah. He was like, we're doing this. So yeah, they he had to he scramble. Didn't order, he didn't order anything. He no, into went. a hail of gunfire. So then he came back and one of the guys was laying down. And he was mm -hmm. like, how are you going to lay down when I'm up on this horse? Get up. And as soon as the guy stood up, he got shot in the head, <laughs> killed instantly. <laughs> then he led the charge. And they were all, you know, a lot of them died. But Some of them it, could have been president. He did it purely out of like, I wanted to be in war, which is really a terrible, terrible thing. Terrible. Terrible leader. He for had that. For that. Yeah. I mean, it's. But he won. He won. It worked out. It did work out. Uh, and. And then when he was another great story about him that I heard was that uh, he would fight whoever was the heavyweight champ. Oh yeah, yeah. he would <laughs> bare knuckle. Yeah. So like Jack Johnson, I think, had just won the championship, so he was invited. He doesn't know this was going to happen. He's invited to the White House. So he, I don't know if they had an Oval Office yet. Yeah. Comes into the Oval Office. I believe Ted, they did. And Teddy was like, "Oh." Terrific. And he fucking starts. <laughs> and Jack Johnson's like, what are you doing? He's like, Don't come on this. now. Because to him, it was like it made sense yeah. that the president should fight with the heavyweight champion. <laughs> Dude. And he fought him and Johnson uh, blinded him in one eye. <laughs> and Teddy begged him, please don't tell anybody because yeah. I'll get it. Because Teddy, he's not supposed to do this. So he used to get people to leave the room. And then he fought him and he, blind and he was always blinding that eye, which he was always in denial about because he was sort of ashamed that he did this thing. Yeah, so, this guy's insane. He was nuts. Again, to me, I'm approaching these guys as characters. Yeah. As fascinating he was, individuals. But he did, he did a ton of great shit. And then he started going after all these trusts. He started breaking Trust up busting. all these monopolies. He started. Right. So he's the first president from this fucking lull of just garbage presidents to start to actually like reform shit. That's right. And start to really. Well, that's what he, he became believed. Like when he was, when he was yeah. governor of New York. He was doing something that was like huge. And one of his aides said, if you pull this off, you could run for president. And Teddy snapped at him and said, don't ever in your life say something like that to me. He said, if I add my own career and potential to the math of my decisions, yeah. then it'll destroy everything. He said, we never, never think about my career. And he really did live that way. Yeah. He personally wanted to be, though. That's funny. Like, he wrote uh, to his lady, because he was in D.C. Yeah. The, maybe before he was the vice president. Mm -hmm. He was in New York. That's that's when he became the vice president. He was in New York, and that guy that he was in his political party, I forget the guy's name, was like, send him to D.C. I don't want him in New York anymore. Yeah. He's a fucking nightmare. No, he was He's a fighting nightmare for everybody. He He's had fighting no everybody. comfortable place he yeah. could possibly be, but president of the United States. But he was like, every time I walk past the White House, like, I could be there someday. Yes. Like, he had that in there, but... The greatest he, piece of film on Teddy is that he was the first president to fly in an airplane. And there's film of it. He went in with a hot rod guy who was like bar a barnstormer guy. Yeah. And it's just a biplane. And they show him, you know, it's shitty black and white footage, but he gets in the plane and it corkscrews and does. He was already retired. He was kind of older. And you see him get out of it and you see him go like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> but that's how much of a badass he was. Youngest president also. Youngest one. 42 or 43. Yeah. Yes. One, two terms. One, two terms. And then... And then elected. And then left. Uh, then he decided not to run the third time because of he didn't like Republican politics. And then he ran for a third term after skipping after, a term. And he split the vote. Uh, on a then, new... On, yeah. What was it called? The party? Bull Moose or something like that? Oh, yeah. We're skipping the party. He gets shot. Yes, he got, <laughs> he got shot, shot. Point in blank chest. in the chest. <laughs> and he had his a big, thick thing of his speech. Yeah. And he had um, something else metal. I forget what was that. Something like that. It wasn't a flask, I don't yeah. think. But he had some shit in his pocket. Didn't The get bullet hurt. got lodged into his chest, though. Right. It went, but it, it went was into in his, his chest. It didn't, it didn't get into his, uh, into his it heart. It didn't break his muscle. No. It stuck there. And then he 
apparently cleared his throat. Finish the speech. And he finished, he said it's going to take a lot more to kill a bull moose. That's what he said. Which is pretty fucking wild. Getting shot in the middle of a speech. <laughs> clearing your throat. It's a great moment. Uh, then he personally elected the next guy, which I'm forgetting. Uh, could have been Taft. And then Taft is okay. But fat, extremely fat guy. Didn't he die in a bathtub? Yeah. No, he got stuck Something in the Something about bathtub. him in a tub. Didn't he get, stu- he get he stuck, stuck and had to get tub. buttered out of the tub? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that takes us to Wilson. Because then he, Taft ran against Wilson. Roosevelt decides he wants to come back. And Wilson was and he a split New Jersey governor of New Jersey or something? I don't know. This is where I stopped. Wilson is... Uh, I don't know much about him. Except for, for me, like some of the sources for what I know about these guys come from different places. So what I know about Wilson is because um, I read this book about, it was called uh, The Peace to End All Peace, a book that everybody should read. And it's about how World War I, the end of World War I was how all the Middle Eastern countries were drawn. Iraq and Iran and Syria and all these places only exist because of yeah. British and American yeah. and French. These are lines that were, these are countries. That's why we don't have like Kurdistan. There's no Kurdistan, but there's Kurdish people. Yeah. But they just didn't have a place at that table. So we just made Iraq. Iraq is a bunch of different What's people that don't belong in a country. What's it together. called? It's the something something. Uh, it's two names. It's a, I mean, whatever. But yeah, it was colonization. They just were like, yeah, the it, treaty or whatever up. the fuck. Yeah. But so, but anyway, but World War One was this just bizarre, stupid. It, until World War I, Europe was still all kings and princes. Yeah. And uh, there was still a country called Prussia. And there was guys that went with like uh, helmets with brushes on the top. <laughs> and they marched around. And he was like the prince of... And uh, it was still the whole... Yeah. And they had some budding democracy. But they still gave it enormous amount of power to their stupid fucking... Yeah, to one family. Yes. They were all related. Yes. And they were, yes, and they were all They're married all to each other. Yes. The, the leaders of World War One were cousins. Kaiser Wilhelm yeah. was an uncle to like Nicholas Tsar, who King finally George. lost Russia. Yeah. And um, so they fought this ridiculous war because, and now they have suddenly had this mechanized, they had machine guns. Yeah. All this, some of this shit was developed here during the Civil yeah. War. And they just start firing crazy weapons at each other, artillery. Yeah. And the US, but the real the thing about that war was the Middle East. It was the it was the Turkish Ottoman Empire, yeah, the Ottoman Empire was falling apart and all of these European countries wanted a piece of what was going to be there. I think they had started to figure out that oil was in the Middle East. I don't I don't have all this worked out in my head. But Wilson refused to get into the war because he knew it was an imperialist bullshit. And at yeah. the time America was ex- against going out and sending troops other places for imperial imperialism was something America hated because it still wasn't that long ago that we were fucking uh, we were a colony. Yeah. So we finally did enter World War One, and I don't know why it was. Which it was hard for the U.S. to enter because half the population's German. You know what I mean? Yes. Half Irish. Yes. They fucking hated England. Yes. All this, and then uh, I think it was like the Lusitania. They I just guess kept that was, doing all that, these. Those things are always bullshit. I don't know yeah, what it finally was. pushed I think, us. I think the Lusitania did have weapons on it. Well, we were, we were selling weapons. We were probably yeah. making money on the war. But when we entered the war, we didn't fight in the Middle East. We're the only allied country that mm. we didn't send any troops. We to. made up for it, though. Later. Let, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, we didn't get any. But that was our position back then. We had like there was like a morality to what we did, at least politically. Not economically, we never cared. Sure, because the those levers were handled by industry, not by the government. Anyway, I don't know that. I'm getting way out of my depth. No, World War. But I don't know that much about Wilson. So then, what I don't happened? either. Who's after Wilson? Wilson after Wilson would be. Uh, I'll tell you. Hold on, Harding. Don't know. Don't care. Harding was. Uh, he was corrupt. He was yeah. really corrupt, and that started leading to, uh, eh. fucking whatever. Then Coolidge, yeah. same thing. Yeah, <laughs> I was just watching shit on these guys. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the Roaring Twenties, though. Yeah. So shit's going well. 
financially. Yeah. yeah, they had their pandemic during all those guys, yeah. by the way. And these guys are all corrupt. Yes. And like, it's just out of control. The yes. economy's out of control. But everything, and this is post-World War One. So who's after Coolidge? Coolidge is Hoover. After Hoover. Right, Herbert Hoover. And then that's just shit starting to turn around a yes. little. Uh, and then here comes FDR. Okay, so FDR, like again, I my approach is always who these guys were as people. And my favorite take on FDR is um, uh, uh, what's his name? Churchill's. So I read this book, Churchill, and and uh, it's called um, Franklin and uh, Winston, about their relationship. Yeah, Churchill was a nerd. He was a you know fat um, English drunk nerd, and he was a lord. He was a little Lord yeah. Fauntleroy nerd. Now, uh, <laughs> Franklin Roosevelt was also he was a rich kid. Yeah, he was a nerd. Uh, he was a nerd, yeah. but he was also a um, really dedicated to the people. And he did a lot of things like up here in up, upstate New York, he had Hyde Park. And there's all these massive estates, Hyde Park and the Vanderbilts live, live next door. And he gave his, when he became president, he gave Hyde Park to the country. He said, you, you just let it be a museum for a time when people, when people lived like this. And he persuaded his next door neighbors, the Vanderbilts, to do the same. He got all the upstate rich people. He said, move into the city and give these places, let yeah. these be places for the people to visit. So that's the kind of guy he was. But so Winston Churchill uh, worshipped uh, Roosevelt. He just thought he was the coolest. He was, um, Americans came off really cool back yeah. then. And Churchill was like this, you know, very, yeah. no. And, and so there's a few intimate stories that are great about the two of them. One of them, Winston came to Hyde Park to plead the case, please come into the war because Franklin wasn't coming into the war. So he was he spent like a night in Hyde Park and they talked and it was and it was uh, Churchill's feeling like for the first time that Franklin maybe liked him. And so the moment that they that's in this book is that uh, he was in his car, Churchill, at night and and FDR was seeing him off. He was like at the window of his car and Churchill said, Franklin, I feel so good to have really spent time with you and I feel a connection with you. And Roosevelt said, take take it easy. <laughs> like I said, just take it easy. And then the other one, and he just hurt, hurt his feelings. Then the other great thing was at Yalta, the conference at Yalta where yeah, this is good. FDR and Stalin. Churchill are trying to get Stalin to come into the war on the Allied, he could have come in at either side. It was a yeah. toss up, or he could have stayed out. But a Russian front to the war was everything. It turned out to be everything. Yeah, the same thing that happened to it's what stopped. Uh, uh, it's what killed uh, Napoleon because Russia is just this deep forest, and anybody who invades Russia just gets absorbed and then stuck for the winter. Yeah. It killed Napoleon, and it killed eventually took hitler it's not where they lose but it's where they get they drains okay yeah so churchill is like the european statesman he's the one who's been fighting the war longer and he's like he's been mechanizing how am i going to do this and so when they get to yalta he goes to to roosevelt and says let's talk let's plan how we're going to get uh joseph and um fdr goes i'll oh, just let's, let's have lunch we'll do it after lunch after lunch and he's like okay when are we gonna we got a confab. You and me, we got to yeah. triangulate. We're going to, you come from that. So good cop, bad cop. Like, which one do you want to do? And FDR is like, it's all right, Winston. It's all right. It's all right. I got that. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll definitely talk about it. And then they're at lunch with Stalin. And, uh, and Roosevelt looks at Churchill and he says to Stalin, Joseph, look at, look at Churchill. Look at what a fat, <laughs> weird little man he is. What? A, look at him with his cigar. Look how ridiculous ridiculous he is and stalin is like shocked and he looks at churchill and he goes ah! and he just <laughs>, laughs and he fucking drinks vodka yeah. with fdr and they fucking singing songs yeah. and fdr and joseph are like best friends <laughs> churchill is a fucking loser yeah and then and then you know and fdr is like so you come in our side and joseph's like yes yes yeah, i come in your side of course yeah, of course i come in your side that's he just read he read the room and he knew what had to be done and it was throwing fucking Winston Churchill under the bus yeah. and making him feel like a fat little fucking. And he was mad about it. He was what? mad. Churchill was mad. Uh, yeah. He like left there. <laughs> no, but he yeah. got the, I mean, he won World War II with yes, that. Yes, he did. But that, he had to be humiliated. Yeah. 
the best was uh, well, a cool one about Churchill and Roosevelt. Not really Roosevelt, but just after Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Churchill sent a cigar to the king and was like, we just won. Like as soon as Pearl Harbor right. happened, he, he was like, because that's over. all he wanted was for them to it's, get involved. It's over. There is one point where he needed to meet in person with FDR. So the British fleet took Churchill into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. And the American fleet sent a warship that had church, uh, that had uh, uh, FDR's yacht on, like just <laughs> sitting on the deck of an aircraft carrier. And they lowered his yacht into the water in the middle of the ocean. Jesus Christ. And it put put putted over to church to the English. And they were ringed by like, you know, the, yeah. if the Nazis had come along, there was like a thousand guns <laughs> yeah. just for a meeting between those two guys on a yacht drinking whiskey in the middle of the ocean. So that's all I got on uh, FDR. Three times? Yeah. And then he died. So here's so Truman. <laughs> okay. Truman. Fuck the New Deal. We don't need to talk about it. Yeah, don't care. We're talking about the guys, not the yeah. not the American history. So Truman was his third vice president. Truman was, uh, yeah, th Missouri, I think. Yes, and he so was considered kind of a fucking loser. Right? He was hated. Hated. Yeah. He was like hated the way that like Ted Cruz is hated. Like that kind of like if you talk to people in Washington, they're just like, oh, I can't with that fucking guy. For different reasons. But Truman was picked. FDR was like, who can we pick that's not going to fuck things up, you know? And they picked Truman. Truman was a guy. He was worked at a haberdashery. Uh, it didn't work out. He, had a, his, he was one of these guys. His father was a farmer, and he was running his farm. And then he um, went and worked at a bank and was kicking ass. Yeah, and then his father's farm failed, and his father, so he took it over, and that wiped out like ten years of his life was just being a farmer, and he had a haberdashery that didn't work, whatever. Um, but so Truman went to the Senate, and then when he became, when he was oh, when he was a senator, his focus was uh, graft during World War II. Basically, all the money, like billions of dollars, would be appropriated for the war. And given to American industries, and they would all steal them. And yeah, every yeah, yeah. senator in Washington <laughs> was stealing all yeah. the war. We were fighting Hitler, yeah. and everybody in Washington was just stealing money and fleecing their fucking pockets, like openly in front of everybody. Yeah. And so Truman like had this idea: let's not do that. Let's let's try to win. Let's try to win, and let's try to get the money to the soldiers who are yeah. dying. And everyone hated him. That's why they hated him. They fucking hated him and I even would, Roosevelt, hated him. what's that i would have hated him most everybody like, hates the guy out of this. yeah everybody hates the one guy yeah even fdr was like do we really want a guy who's <laughs> yeah, like oh yeah, man, yeah. Don't, you know, we need don't a leader steal the money yeah so uh <laughs> they they made him vice president nobody <laughs> liked him they locked him out of every like they always do to the vice president so one night he's in sam rayburn's office sam rayburn was like the greatest speaker of the house ever Sam Rayburn, there's the building in, uh, that all the offices are in, is the Sam Rayburn building. He was like the first great speaker, one of the great yeah. speakers. So Sam Rayburn, he's in his office playing poker with Sam Rayburn. <laughs> they had a poker room, like a dark, smoke, yeah. the smoky, original smoky room. And Truman is just a loser, vice president. <laughs> Nobody talks to him. And he's playing poker with Sam and the other guys late into the night, just having a good time. And then he gets a call. There's a call for you. And it's uh, um, Eleanor Roosevelt. She says, my husband just died. Yeah. You need to get to the White House. So out of habit, because nobody cared about him, he just went on the street alone <laughs> and hailed a cab. Yeah. And there was one moment where he's in a taxi and he realizes, Jesus Christ, we're at war. And the president of the United States is in a taxi. Nobody knows where I am. And then the famous moment is that he got to the White House and Eleanor greeted him at the door and yeah. he said, Mrs. President or whatever, yeah. is is there anything I can do for you? And she says, Mr. President, is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. And everyone was like, this is going to suck. Yeah. She's like, you're the one who's in trouble. Now. Truman's going to blow. Yeah. But he was a very good fucking president. 
He nukes Japan. Drop the bomb. There's a. <laughs> there is a. And don't let it. Don't get it twisted. Anybody don't get it twisted. He, they had it coming. <laughs> All right. There's this thing in history where everyone wants to be like, I can't believe they did that. Look into no, it. No, there's the account of the, um, of the announcement of the uh, Truman was on a ship when it he was on a on a big ship and he was having a big banquet. Yeah. And he got the report in his ear, like George Bush, that they had yeah. just it worked. <laughs> yeah, that it worked. Because yeah. nobody knew if it even worked. And he did a little ting, 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 ting. Hey, everyone. everybody. <laughs> just so you know, we dropped a bomb on the jet on Hiroshima. And it's it worked, and we're starting to. Get, and then I think Nagasaki had dropped after also. Yeah. And there, it looks like we're like gonna, a day later. And everybody, everybody applauded because there was no conflict. Yeah, because. The Japanese were never going to surrender. Yeah. And the amount of people that would have died, this is what it's like when you get deep into a war. How many people have died so far? How many more will die if we do it this way? Yeah. How many will die if we do it this way? Uh, so that's what happened. I don't have an opinion about it. I don't. I do. But that's fine. But here's I don't. the thing. Here's the thing. Nobody cares about Dresden. Nobody cares about no Dresden. Way more people die. Yeah, and it's also and first off, kind of well, not more horrifically. Both had like fire tornadoes. Yeah, that just wiped they, out. Well, they I set mean, the terrifying. atmosphere on fire. Yeah, it's the scariest thing in the world. It's awful. It sucked the oxygen out of a city, and there were fire tornadoes. Yes, people were melting in the streets. Yes, into the street. The like the going pavement, down the drains. The pavement melted, so they'd run out of their houses, and their feet would get stuck. And then they'd reach down and then just be stuck in the fucking. I mean, it's the worst thing in the world. But, but you know, <laughs> they might have had it coming. But <laughs> of course, like these are, a, of course, these are civilians. Of there's course, a joke about uh, two agents running to each other on the street in Hollywood, and one of them's like, uh, "Hey, what have you been up to?" And he goes, "Oh, I produced a special for you know whatever. Just pick a, you know, Celine Dion or whatever." You yeah. Know. He goes, how'd you like working with her? And she's like, fucking cunt, fucking worthless, <laughs> fucking spoiled brat, fucking drunk, fucking drug addled cunt. I hope she fucking dies. And the other guy goes, you know, she's my niece. And the guy goes, let me finish. <laughs> it's an old joke. Cut, yeah. it, cut it out of the thing. No, anyway, that's a good so, joke. <laughs> so, uh, okay, why did we get to that? Because because Nagasaki, uh, uh, Hiroshima. So we dropped the, so Truman dropped the bombs. Um... And uh, won the war, and then the next guy is um, Eisenhower. I only have one good Eisenhower story that I saw told by his son after Eisenhower retired. He was a fucking general. He was a general. Yeah, he killed Hitler. Yeah, and then he was president. And, and he was a president in a very good time. He's one of the few yes. presidents that just kind. I mean, nineteen. He kind of kind of started Vietnam, but yes, he was right? damn good. Yeah. needy part of our history and korea but other than yeah. that <laughs> he had a pretty good time <laughs> got us kicked off in korea yeah. for no reason no reason zero reason yeah zero reason vietnam no nothing accomplished turns out nothing, nothing accomplished. but at the time you wanted to stop the spread of communism yeah no that's what we're doing now in ukraine of course yeah we, go, we oh, need no, to stop communist. the spread whatever it's just good it's good to just, we need to stop russia you gotta just let her, yeah kill <laughs> russians just russians need to yeah. die it's fun it's fun yeah but uh when he retired there's a story i saw his son tell in an interview where um the, he had made a, a putting green on his front lawn like he he got kentucky bluegrass or whatever like he got like perfect grass and he had this beautiful because he was all he wanted to do was putt yeah. in front of his house yeah and then he had a corral where he had horses this is after he's president yeah yeah he's done he's, he's done just he's on the porch putt. with his whole family yeah and they're all sitting there and a horse a green horse gets out an unbroken horse gets out of the st the the corral and start and jumps onto the putting green <laughs> and just starts taking bites <laughs> yeah. out of it and destroying it and his family looks at the general. The, he, it was their father, but they called him the general. And he just said, isn't that the most beautiful thing you ever saw in your life? And they realize, wow, he's not the same guy anymore. <laughs> he's gone. He's different he's guy. He's out. <laughs> yeah, it's over. We forgot. We skipped one thing, which I didn't. I, somehow yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Eleanor Roosevelt was his fucking cousin. Was FDR's cousin. Well, and was their Teddy, uncle. Teddy the crazy was their guy. uncle. Well, no. Teddy was, Teddy was, was Roosevelt's uncle. uncle. 
Teddy was Teddy was FDR's, FDR's cousin. Well, he was like his yeah, older cousin. From, he was like a second cousin. The that, way that your father's cousin is your second. That cousin. crazy brother. Yeah, was Teddy's crazy brother was her father was Eleanor's father. Right. They were all yes. They were all related. They were related. Yes. And Teddy was his um, his uh, hero. Yeah. Yeah, he even got those glasses when he was younger. Yes. It was, it was pretty nice. And then he got to school. He went to school as a young boy, and he was just surrounded by – his whole life he was around rich adults. And then he got to school, and everyone started whooping his ass. Pretty fun. So now we're on Ike. Ike, I don't know nothing about him except for that one stupid Ike, story about the horse. dumb thing about him being called Ike was – Everybody in his family, all his, him and his siblings were all called Ike. Right. And because it was his last name. Yeah. No, I just. Ike. Yeah. Eisenhower. Dwight Eisenhower. Yeah, yeah. but Ike has nothing to do with it. No, it doesn't. He said he had no idea why he was called Ike. No. Him, he said him and all his siblings were all called Ike. They would call each other Ike. Right. It was like they're like, hey. Was he the one where it was Dewey, Dewey wins that thing that happened? There was that newspaper headline that said Dewey wins the election. Was it? For some they, reason, they I thought counted that was, too quick. For some reason, I thought that was always FDR holding that up. I think it's FDR. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. I don't know who all these also rans were. Truman. Truman was holding it up. Yeah. That's so Truman right. got reelected. That's right. Um, so okay. now at Eisenhower. So Eisenhower just running Whatever. through it. So then after, so so Nixon was his vice president and Nixon got in trouble when he was vice president because what? said people said he was doing graft, that he was taking money. Already, when he was a young, first of all, he was a senator and he was a pinko hating, like he started. Where, the thing oh, of, was he in California? He like started the whole Red Scare. Yeah. And he went after a lady who was a local beloved politician and he called her the pink lady. It's the first time <laughs> that they started this thing of pinkos, communists yeah. being pinkos. And uh, she went on to star in um, the Beverly Hillbillies. She's the um, she's the banker's assistant. I don't know if you ever watched that show, the Beverly Hillbillies. No, I, I vaguely remember the she's, intro. She was like the, one of the stars of the yeah. Beverly Hillbillies. She he called her the Pink Lady. But wait, so he so Pinko comes from Pink Lady. Yeah, he started this Pinko thing, <laughs> and he called her the Pink Lady. And he hated the communists. And there's a famous picture of him looking at a. A, a piece of microfilm that it was supposed to be documents that he found that were being stolen by communists. And, you know, and they killed the Rosenbergs. Yeah. All that stuff. But they had it coming. What? Didn't the no, Rosenbergs, they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything? They didn't do anything. Wait a minute. The, when when the, the Cold War started to lift. Anytime someone dies When the Cold War like, started to lift, the KGB said, by the way, the Rosenbergs never heard of them. <laughs> like, they <laughs> gave us nothing. There was a giant red herring. We killed a married so couple with children we blamed, who didn't do anything ever. They blamed the Rosenbergs for nuclear secrets, right? Yes. But they didn't do that. No. And that's all Nixon was really <laughs> into that shit. It'd be funny if they're like, we don't know anything about nukes. Yeah. We don't. We still I've never don't. seen one. <laughs> so um, Nixon becomes a vice president. He gets in trouble. And so he has to give, he gives a speech on television where he's sitting at a desk. It's called yeah. the Checkers speech because he had a dog um, named Checkers uh, who was given uh, to his children. And they said it was a gift that he's, he was supposed to register. You know what I mean? Like he was yeah. taking gifts from, for the from dog? people. Pre quo pro, whatever yeah. you call it. And that the dog was an expensive dog given to his children. So he goes on TV and he te gives tells his finances to the American people. And he says, and I'm an honest person. We didn't steal anything. And here's what happened. And he says, but there's been some comment about this dog. And my kids love that dog and we're going to keep it. And that was like a <laughs> moment that people were like, all right, you're okay. But people never really trusted Nick to call him yeah. Tricky Dick because of way back then. So then he runs against uh, fucking uh, Kennedy. Kennedy, um, and uh, that's number four. He gets yes, and he first Kennedy uh, was on the ballot. He tried to run against Eisenhower. Yes, I believe so. Okay, and then he got to the convention, and he was going to be, and I think Kennedy lost in the at the convention. Used to be the conventions where they picked the guy. Yeah, to whoever the fuck I, Adelaide Stevenson. No, he was. His VP. I don't fucking remember how the, all this works. Yeah. I'm confused by it. So I think Adelaide Stevenson was. Um, I think Kennedy was supposed to. OK, I don't care. Yeah. So Kennedy and Nixon debate on television. Nixon's yeah, that's ugly. apparently. Yeah. When Nixon and Kennedy's Kennedy, not the best looking guy. 
Everybody always is like, he's a hunk. You know what I mean? You know how I'm saying he's a hunk? <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> oh, he's got headphones. Oh, he yeah. is listening. Okay. He is listening. Okay. Uh, sometimes he looks like a bit of a goat. Like he's got wide and weird eyes. He has bedroom eyes. Girls yeah. like that. Oh. Yeah. He's a good, I think he's a good looking guy. Him and Bobby were both good. He's got me dudes. beat for sure. But yeah. Well, you beat, I don't know. You're, you're a, you're a decent looking guy. You're a nice looking guy. <laughs> oh, Let me see him. You're not, you're not handsome the way Kennedy was. I mean, that's I a handsome know, face. That's a handsome man with that head of hair is unbelievable. With that what of hair? That head of hair. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. No, because uh, <laughs> somebody shot the back of it. So who did though? A lot of people. Yeah, you think? Like six guys. I think I think, <laughs> I think a lot of guys <laughs> shot him in the head. So many, they dug so many. I think there were like four people that shot him. Somebody with, with a paper clip. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Wait, everybody. do you have any opinions on that? Do you think it was, do you believe it was the lone gunman, Lee Harvey? I think you can take any event in human history and find an alternate version of it if you dig and dig and dig. And I think a presidential assassination is just so interesting. Yeah. Um, that so I don't have an opinion. I mean, I'm fascinated by it. Yeah, it's really interesting. There to are some think weird about and to read about. It's fun to look into, of course, because it, it seems the culture of it is like the greatest. It seems kind of like something was up. Yeah, was it because he? Was, I always was he trying to end Vietnam? Or uh, no, it had just kind of kicked off. He, the, there's also the civil rights and all that stuff. He was yeah. ramming that down the throats of some guys, and you know, I mean, they offered him a false flag in Cuba, and he was like, "No." Right. I mean, it's crazy. There's a lot what, of what he did, what the what he the what he fought against the states. You yeah. Know? Like, what's his name? The guy at the college with the black kids coming in. Yeah. Standing there, going, "You're not coming in here." Yeah. There's a great documentary that everybody should watch. That's about um, Robert Kennedy, who was the uh, he made his own brother the fucking. Attorney General, which is insane, and who was like twenty when yeah. he made him Attorney General, <laughs> and at the time, what's his name uh, uh, was uh, fucking FBI, the guy Hoover, or no, J Edgar, no, J Edgar, J Edgar, J. Edgar yeah. Hoover was uh, at the head of the FBI, and he had to work under this kid Kennedy. Yeah. And that was a lot of the tension in the country was about that. Um, but the anyway, history hasn't been too kind to J Edgar. No, it hasn't. Because he was gay. Well, he was a cross-dresser. That's why people don't like him. Some people, I don't know which version of this kind of thing he was, but he yeah. wore clothes of a woman, Lee Nature. It's all gay to me. I don't know that he had sex with men, but he wore women's yeah. clothes. Two different things. I don't know. He dressed up like ladies, and then he would try to blackmail like MLK. Yeah. <laughs> he just, yeah, yeah. he would write a black. He'd be like dressed in a woman's dress <laughs> yeah, with did. lipstick. He'd be like, I know what he likes saying, clothes. I know what you've been up to, MLK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ever see that letter they wrote him? Um, they wrote, they wrote, the FBI sent Martin Luther King a letter that was like, you should fucking kill yourself. Really? We're going to out you if you don't kill yourself in the next 30 days. Dude, were yeah. they just trying to hurt his feelings? No, they were trying to kill him. It's just like in shitty text. It's in get. typewriter. It's like, they sent him, they sent him a letter. I think, dear I think Martin. Loretta Scott opened it. Wow. And Loretta Scott. Heretta. Coretta Scott. Coretta. That's Loretta it. Loretta Scott. Whatever. It's close. One letter, Loretta and uh, Loretta opened it. Coretta, correct. And yeah, she was like, "What the fuck's this?" And he's like, "Fucking goddamn FBI is trying to." <laughs> wow, he got caught cheating. He's like, "Fucking FBI again." Oh, I see. <laughs> but but like the FBI, it fucking actually, all these women. But it and... actually was the FBI. He wasn't right. lying. But man, that probably was a tough sell to. It probably was your lady. Be like, this is. She's the like, government. this says you've been fucking all these women. He's like, but you're missing the, the point. The FBI is trying to. The FBI me. is trying to kill me. <laughs> yeah. She's like, who's Louise, <laughs> honey? This is history. They're going to talk <laughs> about this later in podcasts. Eventually, they killed him. So, uh, Kennedy. Um, here's a great Kennedy story. So. Peter Salinger, I think it was his name was uh, Pierre Salinger. One of the he was a great he was a uh, um, a journalist who hung out with Kennedy a lot. So they're in Kennedy's um, in the Oval Office, and what Kennedy really liked bragging about was that he could get anybody on the phone ever. The White House operators could get any human being in the world. So he said to Pierre Salinger, um, I, "Give me a name. I can get him on the phone in ten minutes." And he happened to know that Truman Capote was uh, writing a book in the woods. He was like in a cabin in the woods, cut off, no phone on sabbatical. 
And so he says, Truman Capote. And so Kennedy get picks up the phone on the coffee table and says, Hey, get me a Truman Capote, please. And just hangs up and then they keep talking. And in 10 minutes, he hears like a heli, like they fucking got a helicopter <laughs> and they lowered it. And yes, me can pay you again. <laughs> and uh, so that's what he was like. He liked being president. He yeah. liked the fucking. He was cool. He was a cool president. And Jackie and the was thing cool. about him, and because Nixon is Nixon and Kennedy's stories are just attached. Um, Nixon was a nerd and Kennedy was cool. And it's another thing like Churchill and FDR that Nixon was always heartbroken that people just preferred Jack because he yeah. was a cooler guy. And there's a little story that's in, I think it's in Kennedy's, I think, no, it's in Nixon's, um, uh, what do you call it? In his um, library about how the two of them, when they were senators, they were sent to Philadelphia to debate. Like they used to do this. The Senate would say, you, they get a Democrat and Republican, you guys go up and debate yeah. the issue. So the two of them were in a sleeper car together because they're going overnight or whatever to fill or, or some city where they had to be in a sleeper car. And uh, and Kennedy and so Nixon suggested who well, who gets the top because there's bunks. He says, let's flip a coin. This is the story. And then they flipped a coin and Kennedy won. That's why it's a funny story to people. It's the first time that they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I picture this story like a fly on the wall. They're in the sleeper car and Nixon's like, you know, just nerd packed a little suitcase well, how Kennedy's we been decide fucking, this? he's just fucking somebody yeah <laughs> kennedy's hung over good looking dude smoking a cigarette and he's like i gotta be with this fucking nixon he hates nixon <laughs> and nixon's like uh so i guess um we should flip a coin and kennedy's like what yeah just do well, it well decide who's yeah go ahead Dick. <laughs> yeah. and he won flip, and he's like <laughs> well you won okay dick great Get up. Get Just up get, there. Nobody gives get a the fuck. fuck up there. Yeah, you fucking loser. <laughs> Climb up there. Yeah, so that was them. And then, uh, okay, so Kennedy gets shot in the head yeah. and throat. Yes. And, and the bullet somehow hits the guy in front of him a little weird. What? And he did have AIDS. Yeah, he died of AIDS. <laughs> first one. Yeah, also it kills the governor or paralyzes the governor. Or uh, yeah. I don't know. Fucking Some guy from uh, Texas also got shot. Uh, whatever. That's another one. They said today's medicine. They could have. He would have made it. Kennedy <laughs> with his head just <laughs> empty. Yeah, his head his blew emptied off. head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then LBJ comes in. Okay, so LBJ was a fucking fascinating dude. No, hold on, hold on. How long have we been at this? By yeah, way? it's like uh, now we are exactly right on time. So let's do this. Yeah, we're gonna read some ads. Okay. All right. And then we're going to switch over to the Patreon for the last part. So join the Patreon if you want. Why do you switch? Why are you making them go on Patreon? That way. That way what? It's good. You make, do you need the money? Yes. Really? The ads and the Patreon? You're going to make them listen to ads and then switch to Patreon? Hold on. This is look. This is like when I watch a fucking fight on DAZN, which I pay DAZN. for, and there's a fucking ad between the rounds. Hold on. Is it subscription or is it fucking Holy ad? shit, there's three ads. Hold on. Re- you, yeah, well, but you don't have to put this on Patreon. We you do. don't have to. You don't need the it's money, not for me. Shane, Matt, Matt and Sean need it. I'll, how Matt's much, got a family. How much do you get for Patreon? How much really? You, I'll tell you. you. Tell me. How right much now? do you think you'll make on this on Patreon? If... If one thousand people join, yeah, the Patreon, that's it's five dollars a month. It's five thousand dollars a month, and then you Times think they 12. just stay there, and then yeah, they like it. But you think good. a thousand people will join your Patreon? Five thousand new people <laughs> because of this. Uh, I wish you would stop this, guys. <laughs> I will support pay the greatest him history podcast. Five thousand dollars a month, <laughs> guys, to keep this content. Free. This could be the greatest history podcast of all time, and thank Christ, it's. It's brought to you by Manscaped. Oh, Fellas, Christian. is your bush... It, oh, my God. They're trying to write it like we talk. Fellas, is your bush in super gremlin mode? Manscaped, the global Ugh. leaders in below-the-waist grooming, Ugh. has the best tools for your John Hancock. Holy shit. Ooh. Their performance package 4.0 is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Go to manscaped.com, 20% off if you use promo code Ooh. DRENCHED. <laughs> This is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, get the most precise. <laughs> Dude, why are they doing this to me? Oh. 
I didn't write this. Get the most precise shave on your Ulysses S. Gooch with the waterproof lawnmower. Oh. John Hancock wasn't a president, you no, fucking he was idiots. Not. There was I no don't reason. doubt the product is whatever it says it is, but they're copyrights. Oh, are- man. Clear your Cunts. clear your holes with the wiki wiki wild weed whacker, <laughs> dude. Just stick to regular, please. Manscape is the president on, uh, of unfunny. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Clean your clean yourself up with the crop preserver, crop receiver skin. You spray stuff on your balls. Anyway, uh, get twenty percent off plus free shipping with the code promo code drenched at manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off. Uh, Good Lord. After using Manscaped, your balls will be as golden as the Notre Dame football helmets. I don't know why they did that to me. It's the worst day of my life now. (laughs) Hey, they're doing this. They changed it for all these. Yeah. Hey, also, we're brought to you by Sheath. If you listen to our show, you've probably got a huge dick. And you're gonna you're probably sick of reaching it down, reaching down uh, to get it unstuck from your balls. Thank God there's sheath underwear. Sheath underwear keeps your balls off your legs. The idea for sheath came from its founder, U.S. Army Robert Patton, during his second tour. Louis, second right. tour in Iraq. Who? The founder of sheath underwear, Robert Patton. Yeah. And it worked for him. So it'll work for you. Support the show and support this autumn awesome veteran-owned company like a like an American. Uh, <laughs> God, go to sheathunderwear.com and use promo code drenched to get 20% off your first order everywhere that comes with sheath underwear is 100% money back guaranteed at sheathunderwear.com holy shit you want to read one no absolutely not we're brought to you by DraftKings yeah, you keep doing that I'm just going to turn off it. yeah that's fine The NBA playoff action is nonstop at DraftKings Sportsbook, an original sportsbook betting partner of the NBA. What are you betting on, Sean? What have you won lately? Uh, I should have bet on Cheeto Vera versus – Yeah, this is – such a mistake to try to do ads at the end of this. He probably fucking hates us now. I know. We look like fools. Uh, You have no idea. There's never been a better time to get on DraftKings. (laughs) This week, new customers can bet just five bucks on any team to get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they do. Looking to turn a small bet into a big day? Use DraftKings same games parlays. You can do just that. Combine multiple bets, like which team will win, total threes made, total rebounds, and boom, you've got a shot at an even bigger payout. Right now, all customers place the same game parlay. Fuck it. Three more legs, get free. Bet just bet money. Just gamble. Uh Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Dot com. Download the sports app now. Use promo code Drenched. Bet five dollars on any NBA team to win their game, and you get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they do. That's promo code Drenched only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Also, if uh, you know if someone you know has a gambling problem, call one eight hundred Gambler. So we're going to switch over to the Patreon. That way we can get up to the modern presidents. And uh, thank you for listening. 